Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack making backflips Telly hanged it with the action With the Bible speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When fat cat was tearing queens up Fall off the profit not to re-up Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm baby major Caught a touchdown Moore thinks only one punishment for Allen is fair. I really want her to spend the rest of her life in prison. My grandson lost his life. She should do life. Now for a family member to be at the point where they could say that about another family member that at least could be their cousin, but at most could be their niece, that just shows exactly how much of a tragic situation this was. Birmingham, what up though? It's Shay's Poplar. Now, when we think about some of these towns in the South, like Birmingham, we probably think about good food, easy living, maybe racism. But according to the Trustfield Tribune and the study done for the first half of last year, 2022, it was shown that the city of Birmingham would rank third nationally in homicides, making it one of the most dangerous cities in our country. And there was a time in 2019, where the city would lose three children under the age of six to violence. Now, today I'm gonna do my absolute best to tell y'all the story of a Birmingham woman by the name of Rakia Allen, who will find herself in a situation that will result in a shootout with the baby mother of her deceased cousin, ending with his five-year-old son being hit in the head and killed. Rakia Allen, has now been indicted in the shooting death of a five-year-old named T.J. Moore. It's a tragic story. Back in December, Moore was caught in a crossfire during a family dispute. He was fatally struck by gunfire. Rakia Allen is charged with a capital murder for that incident. The state has, in fact, announced that they plan to seek the death penalty. Now, to fully understand this tragedy, you got to understand the area. Of now, we spoke to some Collegeville residents today who say the rain of bullets seemed to last forever, and now they are terrified for their children and grandchildren. Police say they believe one apartment here in Collegeville was targeted, but the bullets went into at least three units. We spoke to several neighbors today who are too scared to show their faces since the shooters are still on the loose. They're inhumane, they don't have no care. No feelings, no heart, no compassion, that they are destroying somebody. Neighbors believe they heard semi-automatic weapons firing. Police say they recovered more than 70 shell casings from the scene. The terrifying ordeal has traumatized this Collegeville community and seeing a five-year-old girl shot in her own front yard outraged police. Who in their right mind is bold enough to come into Collegeville with all these kids it does not take anyone to drive through Collegeville on any given day and all you see is kids and you fire this many rounds into an apartment. We are blessed that we have not had a child killed tonight and this child will survive. Neighbors say they'll think twice before they let their children play outside again. And I am very shaken up about it. I am because I could be buried every last one of my grandkids today. It needs to stop. It really do. It needs to stop. Now that we got an idea of the playing field, let's flash back to December 7th, 2019. Grandmother is grieving the loss of her son and now grandson, both killed by gun violence. Five-year-old Tenarius Moore Jr. was killed yesterday, caught in the crossfire between two family members. WVTM 13's Bria Douglas is now live in Birmingham. And Bria, you spoke to the grandmother tonight. How's she holding up? Sherry, Cherie Moore was at a unity walk for her grandson and she says she's devastated about his passing and questions why she lost two family members to gun violence. I know you don't supposed to question God, but I have a lot of whys. A father and son gone too soon. Now the matriarch left praying for an understanding. My son leaving at 25 and his son leaving at the age of five. It's like I'm so numb until I'm hurt, I'm disappointed. 
I feel let down and I just don't know why God chose those two. In just two years, two generations killed from gun violence in the same Collegeville community. The deja vu too much to bear for Sheree Moore. My son on his son and I'm tired of it, like gun violence. A mother in mourning there after her son is gunned down near his home. And right now, police are still looking for the person who shot Tenarius Moore. He was gunned down just after 12 o'clock this afternoon in the Collegeville public housing community. That's where CBS 42 News reporter Jamie Ostroff is live right now. Jamie. Sherry, it was such an emotional scene this afternoon behind these gates. This is where police say Tenarius Moore was arguing with his alleged killer moments before his death. A part of me just left. I feel so empty in her. Sheree Moore says she was at work when she got the call. And they told me that my son had just got shot. When I got here, he was laying on the ground. I don't think he had passed as of yet, but a couple of moments later, he was covered with the yellow sheet, and that's when I was told that, sorry for my loss. Cherie's son, Tenarius Moore, was 25 years old. She said he had two young children and a passion for rap music. He was a very loving and kind person. Um, he got along well with others. But there is at least one person who police say didn't get along with Tenarius. There's been some type of long-term feud between him and another gentleman in this area. Lieutenant Sean Edwards says that gentleman shot Tenarius several times after an argument and ran away. But Edwards hopes he won't be on the run for long. Someone actually saw, several people actually saw what happened. So it's just a matter of time before the day out. Hopefully that person will be courageous enough to come forward, give us the information we need. If you have any information that can lead Birmingham police to that shooter, give them a call. Their number 254-1700. Live in Birmingham, Jamie Ostroff, CBS 42 News, local coverage. I go to grief counseling. I have a therapist. I have a psychiatrist. I take medication. And just the support from my family because I would have been lost then. This picture of Tenarius Moore Sr. embracing his son on earth and now in eternity is what gives Moore a sense of comfort. I'm also speaking for his dad who's in heaven and I'm pretty sure that he greeted his son with open arms when he crossed over. And one suspect is in custody for the murder of T.J. Moore. No charges have been filed at this time. Live in Birmingham, Bria Douglas, WVTM 13. A woman and is charged tonight in connection to the death of five-year-old Tenarius Moore Jr. His cousin, Rakia Allen, is charged with capital murder. WVTM 13's Bria Douglas got reaction from the little boy's grandmother about the arrest. Bria, she seems thankful for the arrest, but obviously wants justice. Yeah, Sherry, she's glad that Allen turned herself in and is off the streets. Now she is wanting justice for her taking her grandson's life. His smile, um, his smart mouth, he got it honestly from his dad. Ever since Cherie Moore lost her son, Tenarius Sr., two years ago, she cherished his legacy living on through his namesake. When my son passed, I said, Tenere, I still got a Tenarius. I still got a Tenarius. And now I don't have a Tenarius. Not physically. That's because police say TJ was caught in the crossfire between this woman, Rakia Allen, and his mother, Whiteria. Moore says TJ was sitting in a car waiting on his mom. Allen was in another car. The two were arguing when shots were fired. I don't feel like it was an accident because Whiteria wasn't in that car. 
only the kids. And she heard Wateria basically say, don't shoot, do not shoot. Them children are in the car. And she fired that shot anyway. A bullet taking away a beloved son, grandson, and big brother. They just had the strongest bun, and that's what I'm going to miss the most. Moore thinks only one punishment for Allen is fair. I really want her to spend the rest of her life in prison. My grandson lost his life. She should do life. And after losing two generations in the span of two years, you would think a family's grief would end there, but it would continue even after death. The marker had a picture of my son holding his son. And then on the opposite side, it had his son alone. And it said, reunited with my dad. Tuesday, I did not go out there. Wednesday, something just told me to just go by there. Just go, just go. I was rushing for work, but something said go. So I went. And to my surprise, once I got there, I just saw it was gone. Now, in the 2017 murder of Tenarius Moore Sr., no one would be arrested when authorities would deem it a justifiable homicide when they would determine that he was the one that would fire first in the altercation. And as for Rakia Allen, who just a year before the murder of Tenarius Moore Jr., would end up being charged with attempted murder after, according to the Trustville Tribune, she intentionally hit a man with her vehicle. She wouldn't get the death penalty as the state was looking to seek. She wouldn't even get life. She would end up copping out to a deal where she was set to serve 21 years in prison. Now, we'll never know the details surrounding the argument that would end with the death of Tenarius Moore Jr., but in a situation that seems like when keeping it real goes wrong, it was going to be a tragedy either way. Because even if Rakia Allen didn't hit Tenarius Moore Jr. and hit his mother in the span of two years, he would have lost his mother and his father. Now, y'all make sure y'all hit the red bell and subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. We definitely need y'all in the comment box to know what y'all thoughts are on the situation. Now, at the time of the shooting, Tenarius Moore Jr.'s mother was with another man. And they actually even had pictures posted on Facebook. So, could it have been a situation to where the cousin just didn't appreciate the relationship between her little cousin and the baby mama's new boyfriend? Could it have been a spat that just went back and forth between the families? With this, you just never know. I definitely want to know what y'all think. Y'all definitely flooded downstairs. Let me know what cities we need to go to, what stories we need to tell, what we missed, what gangsters I haven't covered. Y'all make sure y'all hit me directly on Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Until the next time, y'all know the verdict. Shays Popular. Salute the almighty mob.